Hello, Jeff Evans, just uh, con continuing from the last uh, video that we produced, 1.1 to 1.6, so let's go through 1.7. So it says, Pace Haulage Limited is reviewing two small haulage, sorry, haulage route contracts, RTU4 and RTU5 for next month. So the contract will require, will require skilled drivers and the following forecasts are being prepared. Okay, so we've got Contribution for RTU four of five thousand six hundred, fixed cost for three thousand six hundred, and profit from operations of two thousand pounds. It said it takes eight hundred miles to uh, for, for those particular routes, and it requires fifty six driver hours. For RTU five, it is four thousand eight hundred contribution, fixed cost of three thousand six hundred gives us a profit from operations of 1,200. This one requires 400 miles for the route and it requires 24 hours of driver's time. Okay, so this is a limiting factor question because it tells us here, it said there's a shortage of skilled drivers for next month owing to the holidays. So it means that there are only 52 skilled driver, driver hours that are expected to be available for the next two contracts. So 56 and 24, for us to complete this contract, we need 80 hours. But we've not got 80 hours, we've only got 52. So we will have to work out which one is the most profitable. So it says complete all the cells in the forecast profit statement below to reckon how, recommend how many miles should be operated on both routes for next month. So the first thing we do, it asks us to work out what the contribution per mile is. So per is just very similar to divide by. So we're saying, so contribution is 5,600 and they did 800 miles. So therefore, what's the contribution per mile? So 5,600 divided by 800 equals seven. So that's seven pounds per mile contribution or profit for every mile. As far as RTU5 is concerned, Again, 4,800 divided by 400 miles gives us 12 pounds for every mile, okay? Because the limiting factor is, is driver hours, we now need to work out what the contribution is per driver hour. So same process, so this time the contribution is 5,600, but requires 56 driver hours. So therefore, we've got 800 divided by five, sorry, sorry, 5,600 contribution divided by the 56 hours gives us 100 pounds for every hour. So that means we're making a contribution of 100 pounds for every hour. As far as RTU5 is concerned, contribution 4,800 divided by 24 um, driver hours means we've got a contribution of 200 pounds. So we're making £200 for every mile as far as RTU5 is concerned. So on that basis, that's our preferred route because it gives us the greatest contribution. So rank one and rank two. The amount of hours we've got available, as you can see here, our driver time available, it says we've got 52. Um, because RTU5 is the one that gives us the greatest contribution, we're going to basically process that. So it says the amount of driver hours allocated are 24 hours. The number of miles are 400, which therefore gives us a total contribution earned of 4,800. Okay, so you can do that by doing the driver hours, which is 24 pounds. Um, and that is, sorry, 24 hours multiplied by 200 pounds gives you 4,800. Um, so far as the RTU4 is concerned, again, we wanted 56 driver hours, but we've not got 56, we've only got 28 guided hours. So 52 minus 24 means we've only got 28 hours available. So we now, to, we now need to work out, given that we've only got 28 hours available, then how many miles can we do in those 28 hours so so the calculation is so you have to work out how many um, miles per driver hour 
So if you go 800 miles divided by 56, it turns out to be just over about 14 miles for every hour. So um, 800 divided by 56 and then multiply it by the 28 hours we've got available will determine how many hours we can actually do in that particular time frame. So 800 divided by 56 multiplied by 28 means we can only do 400 hours. We can't do the 800 hours that uh, we initially required, which is actually half, as you can see. So therefore, the contribution earned. So your contribution per driver hour was 100 multiplied by the allocated driver hours means we've got a contribution of £2,800. Overall, that gives us a contribution of 7600 and our fixed costs overall for the routes is 7200 which gives us an overall profit or forecast profit of £400. £7,600 minus £7,200. It then asks us, it said, complete the following sentence using your results um, from A above. So RTU5, which is the one that gives us the greatest contribution, should be selected as the first contract to operate this month. It gives us the greatest contribution per labour hour, but it also gives us the greatest contribution per mile. So we'd always go for the one that gives us the greatest contribution. We've then also got a question that says, well, as, a, as it gives us the highest contribution per labour hour, which is our limiting factor. Okay, so that's 1.7. Keep practising. For 1.8, it's asking us to identify sort of the, very, the cost behaviour, uh, given this information that we've got. So it said that Pace Haulage Limited is reviewing costs for the next quarter for UK haulage contracts RTU 42. It says the cost analysis table below shows cost behaviour per mile travelled uh, for the four different cost classifications. So it says complete the table below by selecting the correct cost classification or the correct classification for each cost using the drop down box and then calculate and insert the total cost at 6,000 miles travelled uh, for the cost 1 to 4. Okay, So we're going to see it's identifying whether it's a variable, semi-variable, stepped or fixed cost. So we'll take one at a time. As far as the first one's concerned, it's uh, £30 per mile. So three, 30 pounds times 2,000 miles is 60,000 pounds. Two, 20 pounds a mile, or so 20 pounds times 3,000 miles is also 60,000. And the same with the 5,000 and the same for the 6,000. So we know that the cost overall will be 60,000. Uh, 60, so we know that that indicates that that's a fixed cost. So that's our fixed cost at £60,000. For the next one, it, we've got a um, variable cost which stays the same. So £9 per unit through each cost classification. So 9 times 2,000 is obviously 18,000. 9 times 3,000, then it's 27,000. So we know that these are our variable costs because the variable cost per unit stays the same it changes with the relative output. So we know that that's a variable cost. And it asks us to calculate what the cost would be if it was for 6,000 miles. Okay, So 9 times 6,000 miles equals £54,000. For the third classification, um, we've got £12 times 2,000. Um, is £24,000. For um, 3,000 miles, 8 times 3 is also £24,000. If you check the one that's uh, 5,000 miles, the cost per unit is 6, so 6 times 5,000 is 30,000, as is 8,000 miles. So because these costs are the same overall, at 5 and 8, and also 2 and 3, 
we know that they're a step cost because you go well, as you go up to a certain amount of miles it, it's basically well, it increases so from 28 to 30,000 so we know that that's a step cost so step fixed cost um, it's safe to say on that basis that if it's 30,000 at 5,000 and 30,000 at 8,000 then we know that the um, cost will be 30,000 at 6,000 miles and the final one is so 16 times 2,000 miles gives us 32,000 um, pounds 14 times 3,000 gives us 42,000 pounds 1240 times 5,000 gives us 62,000 pounds so for each thousand miles it's going up by 10 um, by 10,000 each time so we know so like the variable cost will be ten pound, but we can check that. So if you use the high-low method to prove that it's the semi-variable cost, as I said before, so at two thousand miles it's thirty-two thousand pounds, at eight thousand miles it's ninety-two thousand pounds. So ninety-two minus thirty-two gives us sixty pounds. So that's the high, and eight thousand minus two thousand gives us six thousand. So therefore, 60 divided by 6 equals 10. So we know the variable cost is £10 per mile. So you can just check that. So 10 times 2,000 is 20,000. So we know that the fixed cost is the 32 minus the 20. So we know that fixed cost is 12,000. So we know it's a semi-variable cost. And we know that the fixed cost is 12,000, as we said before. And we know that the variable cost is £10 per unit. So therefore, 10 times 6,000 is 60,000, plus the 12,000 fixed cost gives us total cost for 7,000 miles of £72,000. Um, again, um, in the exam, it's worthwhile writing it out so you can work out what your calculations are going to be. For 1.9, 1.9 is a flex budget question. So it says Pace Haulage is reviewing actual performance against budget for December for its International Service Profit Centre. PHL operated 80,000 haulage miles, however, so it budgeted for 80,000 haulage miles, however, the actual haulage miles uh, travelled was 4,000 less than budgeted. So there's a couple of ways of doing this, but I'll just explain. So the first thing what we work out, because we're giving all the budgeted information, we can work out what the selling price per unit was, or the selling price per mile. We can work out what the driver's wages was per mile. So once we know these budgeted figures, we're trying to work out, so okay, so if we only did 76,000 miles, then how much should it have cost us? So for example, so for 80,000 miles, the sales revenue was 1.2 million. So 1.2 million divided by 80,000 gives us 15 pounds per mile. So our sales revenue is 15 pounds per mile. So if you do 15 times 76, that will give you what we should, revenue that we should have raised, given we only did 76,000 miles, and that's 1,140,000, okay? million one hundred and forty thousand you can do the same for the drive for the driver's wages so two hundred and fifty thousand divided by 80 will give you the uh, the driver's wage per mile and then you multiply it by the 76 will give you what it should have cost us for the driver's wages okay and the same for vehicle maintenance but just to explain the other way which is the same for this in the synoptic assessment type question. So you could also work out that um, 76,000 miles is what they actually did, but they budgeted to 80,000, so that's 4,000 pound less. So 4,000 divided by 80,000 multiplied by 100, well, that's like 5% less than we um, expected. So the actual miles traveled was 5% less than the original. So the other way you can do it is 1,200,000 and 
and then multiply it by 0.95 or 95 percent and that will give you the same figures so um, 1.2 million so 1 million 200 thousand times 0.95 will give you the same figure so 1140 1, 1, 1, 1, okay 1,140,000 do the same with the driver's wages so you can do 250,000 times 0.95 will give you 237 so 237,500 vehicle maintenance same so 180,000 times 0.95 to represent 95 percent gives us 171,000 okay our fixed overheads are fixed so our fixed overheads are 210,000 so now we work out the variance as far as the variance is concerned we um, expected our sales revenue to be 1,140,000 given our sales revenue was budgeted to be £15 per unit but our actual revenue was only 1,115,000 so it's a £25,000 less than what we expected or that should have happened from our budget so far as the driver's wages are concerned um, given that we only did 76,000 miles our driver's wages were expected to be 237,500 and our actual was 236,100 so that's a positive so we're positive of 1,400 because it's not cost us as much as we expected same for the driver's wages so we expected it to cost us 171,000 but it only cost us 169,000 which is a positive variance of 100 so 1,800 um, our fixed costs were expected to be 210,000 210,000 and Mr. Zero but they actually turned out to be 210,150 so again that is a negative variance or an adverse variance of 150 pounds didn't do my totals so our totals are 521,500 our actual was 499,000 so overall we're looking at the overall variances now because it said adverse variance must be noted by must be donated with minus um, brackets and then it says enter zero any figure that is zero but that's not the case so we've got a minus 25,000 in revenue but then we've gained on the driver's wages and the, and the maintenance but our fixed costs were um, more than we expected so our overall variance is 21,950 again without forgetting to put the minus <coughs> Excuse me. so then it says identify below the variance that was the main reason for the difference between the actual profit from operations and the budgeted profit from operations let's see what options it's given to us it seems more likely that the sales variance is the biggest reason for the difference between the two as you can see because it's 25,000 less than we expected so the sales variance is the main reason for the difference between the flexed and the actual and then finally for the last question <coughs> So it said Pace Hall is limited, is considering two possible investments. The first investment is more risky than the second, and the most important criteria here is for the project that limits PHL's risk. So their key um, factor there is, is to minimize the risk. The second investment is more um, PL's more at PHL, is more interested in the return offered by the project team. So it says that PHL is looking for two alternatives for each investment. Project 1 and Project 2 is one alternative uh, for the first investment, while Project 3 and Project 4 um, is for the second investment. It says it's produced the following forecast. Okay, So Project 1 and Project 2, and it tells us in the question that for Project 1, 
the most important criteria is to limit the risk okay so for the first investment which is project one and which is the thing that that's basically meets the company's investment criteria well it's to minimize the risk so the best way to minimize the risk with reference to the first project is the payback period because it means to be paid back within 3.5 years 3.5 years so it is the the quickest payback period is the is the best indicator for um for risk i suppose okay as opposed to a net present value where you've obviously got the cost of the investment minus the discounted cash flows whereas the second investment it tells us that they're more interested in the um also in the second investment the more what does it say uh, more interest in the return so the return is the most important factor for the second investment so for project two oh i've not done it right have I? well project one sorry so project one in the first investment is the one that gives us the the payback period of less than project two so we go for project one sorry i should have read it properly rtfq as we say and for the second investment either project three or project four uh, which one meets the company's investment criteria quite clearly is project four because it gives us 46,000 um, 46,000 net present value so it gives us the highest net present value back to that first one so first investment it said which one of the two should it invest in well obviously project one because it gives us the um, quickest payback period as opposed to 3.5 okay then it says review the four statements in the box and identify whether they are true or not by selecting the correct option so so far as the first one is concerned it says the internal rate of return which is the rate that the organization sets uh, that they want as a return on their investment is always the same as the company uh, the cost of the company company's capital which is obviously false because as i said before so the rate the internal rate of return is the rate that the um, organization sets as a return on their investment where obviously the cost of the capital is whatever the cost of that capital might be so two clearly different things the next one says the net present value um, method discounts future cash flows to present a present day value well you'll know from sample one or all the other things we've done in class is that the present value does take into account the present cash flows or the future cash flows to present day values using those pv factors next one says the internal rate of return so if the internal rate of return so the rate that the organization sets as a minimum for a return if that is greater than the cost of the capital for a project then it should be on it should be undertaken well yes obviously because the rate of return is greater than what the cost of the capital and the project uh, should be undertaken and then finally it says the, pay, the payback method uses profits from the uh, project to determine the payback period well that one is false because it uses the cash flows doesn't it so the inflows of cash and then you you check them cumulatively against the outflow of cash so it's not the profit it's the cash inflows measured against the outflow of cash hope that helps any questions you know where i am